Hey everybody, Thomas Vanderkin here from the Vanderkinverse. I'm so excited today. I've got Andrea Hogan here. She's the Senior Director and Marketing Lead for North America and Australia. Good morning. Good afternoon there, <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Hey Andrea, so glad you're here. So it's a privilege really to have you on exciting, like we're talking about 5G on this uh, kind of show we're putting together and who better than to have Qualcomm on to talk about what's going on with 5G. So can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So um, working at Qualcomm, I have the privilege of, of working there, especially in these times. I've been there for the last 10 years. Uh, Qualcomm, for those of you who don't know, is a company based here out of San Diego. We are the world's leading wireless technology innovator. Um, we have 37,000 people, most of which are in San Diego, but we're pretty much in every continent across the globe. Um, but based here in San Diego since, since, since the 1980s. I think we're coming up to our 35th year here this year. So, mm -hmm. so um, a, a major employer here in, in San Diego itself, but a, uh, a formidable force in the, the wireless world globally. For sure. Uh, so what's cool about 5G? What's cool? Well, that is a question. <laughs> 5G was, was top of mind, you know, six months ago, a year ago. And all of a sudden, um, there is this call of duty to 5G that is really accelerating the entire ecosystem to, to launch and deliver. And just so you kind of understand Qualcomm's, Qualcomm's role in 5G too, is that you know people know Qualcomm as being a lot of times the chip that's in phones, right? But Qualcomm is also has played a huge part in every single generation, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, and now 5G of mobile broadband in laying out the foundational kind of requirements, right? and inventions that really provide a foundation for for these networks. So we have a large part to play within the entire ecosystem. Uh, pretty much every smartphone in the world, actually every smartphone in the world, I can say that as a fact, has Qualcomm chips or technology inside. So um, that's a, a pretty a pretty significant, uh, significant milestone for us and, and really gives us a strong voice in the entire ecosystem. And we're, we're really focused as part of that really at our, at our core is around, you know, enabling uh, customers, transforming entire industries and, and enriching lives. Uh, on the 5G front, what's cool is everything to date has been centered around the smartphone, right? Every single kind of experience or improvement um, around broadband has been really focused on the smartphone and 5G is virtually going to touch every single industry. and um, at no time uh, like now with this current crisis that we're facing, which is really unprecedented, has um, 5G been kind of more front and center. And I think all of the ecosystem from the OEMs to the operators to, to governments and countries are really now kind of putting the foot on the gas to make sure that we, we bring 5G to, to mainstream as soon as possible to make sure that the, that digital backbone is in place to um, support all of these industries that are going to rely on it so much going forward. So lately I've been in the house watching HGTV probably just like everybody else in every channel, whether it's on Hulu or HGTV, it seems like everybody has 5G ads on. What does that even mean? How's that going to impact me? Why Why 5G kind of like, what does that even, you know, kind of- Why do I care? I, it seems like it's huge. Everybody's talking about it, but what's it going to change? What is it going to change like in the next couple of months? And what's it going to change then in the next year or two, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I mean, from a, from a consumer standpoint, what's in it for me is the first, for, as a marketeer, I, I get that, right? We want to make sure that you know how it's going to make your life better. And for, at a very basic level, it makes all the, the use cases that you use now on 4G better, right? So you're going to have better performance. You're going to have better speeds. You're going to have better reliability. You're going to have... Um, you know, better capacity. Um, but really what makes 5G kind of incredibly impressive are the new use cases that will emerge. Now, some of these, we don't know yet what they're going to be, right? We, we can kind of guess, but 4G created entirely new services that had never been seen before, like the Ubers and, you know, online banking and 
video streaming. So 5G we know, and the companies like Microsoft and Google, these companies will step in and Amazon and they will create these phenomenal use cases that will really tap into every single uh, capability that 5G will bring to the table. But we do know there are things that are going to immediately benefit and um, technologies that are kind of uh, present now but haven't really gone mainstream like we know mobile gaming will become really be supercharged in a world of 5g yeah. we know that retail will be impacted with and be more Im immersive online with ar and vr technologies we know that capabilities in entertainment and venues will be will be enhanced with them um, more uh, just in general broadband capability and, and uh, performance within the venues but also unique experiences in venues we know that in uh, healthcare um, and telemedicine will be possible now. We know that industry and enterprise will be um, enhanced, and there'll be remote working will be will be enabled. The automotive industry also is going to be turned on its head as cars can now, you know, there'll be automotive. Um, autonomous driving there will be enriched experiences inside the car there's just a host of industries that are going to be impacted by 5g and we have you know approximately 10 years every kind of g period was about 10 years so we think 5g we've got about 10 years to bring all of these mm. uh, incredible experiences to to people like you and me <laughs> uh, exactly. that will benefit from it all that's really helpful. Well, I know practically Lenovo, uh, I see a ton of products that are coming out that all have Qualcomm in them some way or another. I said, we got this Think Smart View. I've got it right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's yes. got a Qualcomm processor in it. I've, we've got our servers that are LTE enabled. We've got uh, PCs that have Qualcomm processors and they're getting these like crazy battery life uh, capabilities with a Qualcomm processor. So it's like, um, it's just kind of changing practically some of our devices that are able to be released now uh, just because the Qualcomm processor, I guess, starts from kind of a phone heritage and builds up. So it's got these long battery life communication kind of built into it rather than come from like server down or whatever, where it's a different kind of philosophy on chips, I guess. So. I'm, it's exciting to see the new products and what they're delivering from Qualcomm. But look, we love partnering with Lenovo between the role, I mean, our, our you know, North America customers for us and you guys are so exciting because you touch all these different segments that we play in so we have one customer that's playing in all these spaces which is kind of the ideal world for us because we can kind of invent and collaborate together in all of these these segments um you know you guys came on you're so incredibly innovative with the uh, the world's first 5g pc that we announced last year and um, announced yep. formally at ces and that's going to be showing up here in the next couple of months so we are incredibly excited that you guys um continue to invest Best, um, and are revolutionizing um, a space that has been, you know, it hasn't been massively interesting, let's be honest, for the last few years. But I think there's really a, a turning point for mobile um, in the PC space to bring all of the features and benefits we love about the smartphone into that PC form factor. And then 5G, by the way, that's going to that's going to really propel that always connected PC experience. So you guys were front, you know, front and center there. And I hope you continue to lead the charge because it's a incredibly exciting category. So one last question I kind of like to ask everybody I talk to, what else are you working on? What's what's cool? Anything else you want to talk about kind of as we wrap up here? Well, it is what's not cool. <laughs> no, it is as we're starting to go into our new year, so fiscal planning. And, and this year, actually, what's been so interesting about that is uh, our fiscal year starts in October is we're now in a very, very different world than we were in um, six months ago or this time last year when I was doing this planning. So what does marketing look like and what will my team be focused on? And I will tell you one thing since we're on the topic of 5G, it, you know, first and foremost, it will be 5G related activities and um, that is critical to what we are doing and making sure all our partners are, are launching their 5G devices in time, that we're supporting their sell through of their products and um, on the event side which is becoming obviously in, incredibly interesting as physical events are now going virtual or there might be some hybrid version going forward. But we know that these massive colossal events that either we've been a part of or that we have spearheaded ourselves are kind of a thing of the past. So what does that world look like and how do we show up and how do we tell our stories now in engaging ways when media might not be 
you know, converging with us and, and sitting in the same room as us and we, our audience are right, aren't right in front of us. But I'm excited that I think that, you know, no company is better positioned to live in a digital world than we are. And we 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 turned on a dime with this work from home thing. I don't know what it was like at Lenovo, but we had just shifted over to Microsoft Teams. So our IT organization has been phenomenal. Our hate our organization has really made sure that people are feeling safe, connected, um, and they're they're super responsive. But because we are we're a technology company, we have adapted, I think, really, really quickly to this remote working environment and uh, we're not missing a beat. So we're, we're fortunate to work for a company that supports us like that and um, is is in this space, right? It's we know it's difficult for a lot of other organizations and that's why Qualcomm, like many other companies like Lenovo too, we're, we're helping a lot of organizations in this time because we are in that space that is not impacted as conversely. We are impacted on a human level, but not on the same way, right? Economically, um, as a lot of other organizations. Well, it looks like you've chosen a beautiful work environment for to work from home in there in <laughs> California. So it's, <laughs> the garden space, nice to get a bit of fresh air. You, yeah, as yeah. we talked a bit earlier, you know, being from Ireland, I uh, grew up with rain every day. So it's just such a um, treat still 20 years later to be in the sunshine and uh, and now I get to, to work on it a little bit. So I'm, I'm taking every advantage of that, right? Exactly. Well, I really enjoyed this. Hopefully you'll be open. We can check in again and uh, find out what's going on. And uh, not too long. I'd like to talk again. Thomas, anytime. Take care <laughs> of yourself. Stay well, stay healthy, and we'll chat soon. Thanks, Andrea. Talk to you later. Take care. Bye.